Greetings Minecrafters and welcome to another exciting discussion on all things Minecraft, all things well-being. My name is Kimberly Quinn and I am here to talk with you about the importance, the absolute importance of embracing solitude. So remember that the main foundation of Minecraft is thoughts come first, feelings come second, and actions or behaviors first. So it's all about what we allow in the cabeza, definitely. And solitude has a whole lot to do with calming down the mind. And lots of people will say, lots of the big thinkers will say that, you know, a calm mind is a powerful mind. One of those people will be Deepak Chopra, in other words, John Kabat-Zinn, the mindfulness gurus. Um, a calm mind is a powerful mind. So here's the thing. Stigma, okay, stigma, stereotypes, whatever you want to say. I guess I'd lean more stigma. Think about it, way back when, I'm a fabulous 57 now, and I remember being on the playground way back when at the Duzine Elementary School in New York, and just, I remember watching, because I was that kid that loved being the dead center of the dodgeball game, or whatever, um, but kids would be kind of lured back into the thick of it, of, you know, the thick of the stimulation who were trying to pick wildflowers or sitting, there was a giant rock by the swings. They'd sit on there and just kind of watch people or maybe look at a picture book or read a book or be on the swings alone. And not to judge the very well-meaning recess, I think we called them aides back then, it's probably so outdated. But anyway, the helpers on the playground, nice well-meaning grown-ups, let's say that. That's a tough one, I don't want to judge them because if you saw a kid off on their own, you might think that they were excluded. And it's tough to tell when they're, you know, eight or something. So there's no judgment. It's just there's probably a mix of that because sometimes the child may have been, you know, introverted and they recharge their batteries by being alone and maybe totally overstimulated from the first half a day of first grade and needed to hang out by themselves, maybe just watch kids and they're listening to them, their inner voice, listening to their gut. I need to recharge and rejuvenate in this way. And I know that about myself even at seven or eight when I don't even have the language for all that. I just kind of know instinctively that I, this is how I decompress at lunchtime. Um, and then you may have had a child who's shy, which is different than introversion, right? Introverted and extroversion is how we recharge our batteries, and shy is a fear of social rejection. So if that's the case, then the well, very well-meaning recess person, you know, may have been, you know, it may have been a good idea to kind of help the child integrate back into the games or, or whatever like that. And it's tough to know. But anyway, the point is, no matter how you cut it up, we got bad messages, shameful messages early on, even if they weren't, you know, there was no intention of that. It happened because we learned that skating off on the sidelines by ourselves was not normal. Something's wrong with us. Something's wrong with us if we want to be alone and in the quiet and go for a, you know, go for a walk in the woods by ourselves or whatever. And it's interesting because um, I actually know a couple of people, my mom friends who, um, will go off on, I don't want to say full-blown vacation, it's more like a weekend or an overnight in a hotel. I wouldn't say it's like off on a cruise, but if they did, good for them. But they'll, I can think of one in particular who do, actually does do that, sort of. She goes off different cities and goes there for a weekend by herself, ah, with full intention of being alone. Good for you. Because here's the thing, we know that solitude has tons of benefits, lots of benefits. By the way, if you're wondering why I'm draped in a Snoopy blanket and my monster hat is because it is freezing. And we've got both wood stoves going full tilt. It's like negative a thousand. It's so cold. And so anyway, just thought I'd mention, you know, what's with all the, you know, Snoopy wear and everything. Anyway, so the benefits of solitude, it calms the mind. A calm mind is a powerful mind. We are so incredibly, uh, we have so much incredible ability for creativity and invention and all this stuff when we quiet the mind never mind just the plain inner peace happiness and joy uh, and I know for me this is absolutely true and I'm in case you can't notice as extroverted as it gets so I recharge my batteries with people I love doing presentations and all that stuff and that said when I need to plan for um, you know whatever I'm doing I do all kinds of creative stuff with Champlain with the students defense against the dark arts whatever when I am trying to come up with new ideas, I head for the woods with little Giovanni. That's where it all happens, out there. In fact, I came up with the whole, I think I mentioned this, the Minecraft title for all this, In the Woods with him. Um, so we know that that happens, and there are lots of, you know, lots of really good quotes. And Einstein, Einstein's one of my favorites. I think he's a lot of our favorites. And he, as much as he did with all the theories of relativity and all that, he actually talks 
I shouldn't say way more. He talks, he talks, let's just leave it independent. He talks a lot about um, his imagination and his imaginative thoughts, as he would say. In fact, a lot of his ideas came to him on the couch when he was napping or just hanging out, being still. Uh, Nikolai Tesla, I just, uh, I'm on the Minecraft podcast, not this YouTube, the podcast, which is different than this, by the way. If they, even if they have the same title, they might be a little different because I often read little blurbs. And I did that this morning on the podcast because Nikolai Tesla has lots to say about solitude and how it just feeds invention, feeds invention. Another thing that has gotten in the way of our embracing solitude besides the stigma and you're withdrawn and weird and what's the matter with you, even as an adult, if you want to go be, be by yourself, another thing that's gotten enormously in the way is the whole FOMO thing and our need, even as a seasoned grown-ups, our need to be connected. And you know, these pop-ups happen on the computer and then we, we jump into those and we just, have, we just run around like gerbils on crack, you know, from, from thought to thought to thought. And what happens with that is we can become emotional runners. Also, I'm thinking of Wall Street and not that every single person on Wall Street is an emotional runner. However, I have seen it in real high flying jobs where people don't even feel anymore. I mean, they just, dribbles on crack is the best way I can say it. And especially if there's all kind of external reward. I'm thinking of one person in particular that I know is, is uh, super financially successful and all that. And he's kind of becoming aware that like, for what? You know, as far as like his, you know, what, what, what makes his heart sing and his passion and all that. We had to talk about it a while back at a barbecue. He's become an emotional runner. He doesn't even know what, what's, what his purpose is or what makes him passionate. He's swimming in so much money, he couldn't spend it in 10 lifetimes, but he's really not that happy. And so solitude is also, wherever you land on the introverted, extroverted spectrum, is, doesn't, is independent of that. I mean, obviously the introverts need more time to recharge because that's, re, that's how they recharge. But even the most extroverted of us also need solitude, absolutely. And this is where, where we get back in touch with ourselves because the internet, and obviously it's not all bad. I mean, there's good things that come out of technology for sure. Though at this point I'd say many, 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 many of us, I think, have become, have become completely disengaged from ourselves and who we are, our thoughts, like just disengaged. It's like a connect the dots you know, on meth kind of thing. We jump from here to that, 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 to this. Don't even know where it started, where it began. And all we know is at the end of the day, we were accomplishment junkies. We know we just accomplished all this stuff, but like, what happened to the life minutes? You know, they went down the rabbit hole, not even knowing and experiencing any of what, any of our day really. It just like zoop, flew by. And so it's so, so important to take that time for solitude and to also change our mindset. Being alone is good. It doesn't make you weird. I mean, it's a little weird maybe to wear a monster hat and a you know, Snoopy blanket on a YouTube video, but I don't care about anybody's judgment. In fact, I don't give a fat rat's ass. Why? Because I'm a fabulous 57 and I'm doing my thing. And I know that it is, uh, that I'm channeling, you know, value and positivity into the world by, um, with our conversations. And so there you go. So embrace solitude, change your mindset about it because being alone is good. Role modeling this for our children is good. Remember balance, because sometimes kids need to be pulled in to be part of the, everything too, but balance, solitude, and also to make sure to carve out more solo time for yourself, just like you would uh, you know, make a dentist appointment. If you've ever had an abscess tooth, and I have, it's not fun. People figure it out, they figure it out. When you drop off the grid, the world still spins without you. And sometimes when we're in gerbil on crack mode, it can be really hard to start to start it up and get the solitude going. So you might have to actually be super calculated with it at first. And then like anything else, it gets easier. Whatever we practice gets easier. It's less maintenance, whether it's playing the violin, soccer, cooking, skiing, whatever, it gets easier. And practicing good self-care and working solitude into our day gets easier too. And it has to do with, with valuing ourselves. Valuing ourselves because you deserve to be happy. You deserve to be joyful. You deserve to be your most creative self. Everybody's creative. Everybody on the planet. Think about it. The creator of all things made us. We therefore have creativity or universe or however you say that. We are all creative. So here's the thing. Embrace solitude. You will be happier, more joyful, 
and experience way more inner peace and your creative self will be on fire. Okay, this is Kimberly Quinn signing off from my very freezing kitchen in northern Vermont. Have a mindful day of solitude.